Hey guys, Spud here, as always. And after my first Apache video went live yesterday, a whole lot of you guys reached out to me via the comment section or adding me on Discord or sending me private messages asking how I set up an Xbox controller to control my left and right hand grips on the TDAC of the AH-64D Copilot Gunner C. It's really not that difficult, but before we hop into the adjust control section, let's go ahead and do a quick demonstration of how we can actually use an Xbox controller to the best result in the Copilot Gunner seat of the AH-64. So we'll go ahead, looks like we got a tank here along the coast of Tyre here along the Lebanese coast. And we'll go ahead and arm up our weapons. We will waz our missiles and we'll go for a high trajectory. We've got our, everything is set. We're using our laser code alpha for all missiles and for our emitter. So that's gonna work perfect. And let's go ahead and engage that P-55. Now, because we have a windy day, our George AI is trying his best to hover behind us, but you can see there's a slight linear motion to the right-hand side, and it's very, very easy for me to track the target, even though we have a slight movement with an Xbox controller with a little thumbstick. Because I'm sure many of you guys out there are used to playing, you know, first-person shooters and things like that with your Xbox controller, it's going to make it very, very simple and easy. I found that I can track moving targets very, very easily, as well as when the helicopter itself is moving and I'm trying to track a moving target with an Xbox controller super, super easily. Um, and that will be a fantastic stopgap until things like a quote-unquote point track mode for the TDAC and TADS will come out later in the early access period of the Apache. So let's go ahead and open up the adjust controls section of our Seraf, which in Hebrew means fiery serpent or winged serpent, which is the Israeli name for the AH-64, which is almost kind of cooler than the Apache name. Um, of course, the Apaches were a Native American tribe that fiercely resisted the westward movement of white settlers in the 1800s across the southern plains and deserts of the United States and Mexico. Um, so definitely two very fitting names for this very deadly helicopter. One thing that I think everyone should know about the keybinds in the AH-64D is the fact that all of your keybinds that you set up to fly the helicopter from the back seat, you can transfer directly to the front seat when it comes to actually manipulating the systems of your aircraft um, beyond the weapon systems and your flight controls are all identical. So to actually do that, all you need to do is in the co-pilot gunner section, if say you want to import your stick keybinds for your cyclic, all you got to do is click on one of the um, boxes for your stick category, go to load profile, make sure you're in the input folder, then go to your block to pilot folder, joystick, click on your stick file here, hit OK, and they will automatically populate right there. And then continue um, ad nauseum until you have your throttle or your collective or even your Xbox controller mapped to everything you need in the front seat as well. I wish more aircraft that were multi-crew capable were like this, where you could just load everything and everything was the same from the front seat and the back seat, but it is very nice that this is the case with the Apache. So on to using an Xbox controller for the TDAC inside of the AH-64's co-pilot gunner seat. A lot of people have also asked me, Spud, why are you using an Xbox controller versus a PlayStation controller? The reason being is, of course, Xbox and Windows are both owned by Microsoft. So if you have a USB cable, like for a USB-C to USB-B cable that I have for connecting an Xbox One controller to my PC, all you got to do is just plug that bad boy in and you're good to go. From my understanding, I could be wrong, but PlayStation controllers require some third-party software to actually work correctly with a Windows PC. So that's something to keep in mind, guys. If you own an Xbox, you're set and good to go. But if you own a PlayStation, you may want to go out and invest, you know, 60-ish bucks in getting an Xbox controller for your PC to have a very seamless experience. 
Another thing to keep in mind as you're trying to bind your Xbox controller in DCS World is the fact that the two triggers on your Xbox controllers are actually axes. And I have searched high and low over the internet to try and figure out a way to turn the triggers axes into buttons through software in Windows. And so far I have struck out. So if any of you guys out there know how to do something like that, please sound off in the comment section down below. That would be massively helpful. And I may even create a new video showing you guys how to do that in the future to help you guys out in that way as well. Um, so on to how I actually mapped my TDAC to my Xbox controller. Now the actual controls that we have mapped right now are very much limited to what is available to us in the TDAC and using the TADS here as of the early access release of the Apache slash Zeroth. And so that's kind of what we have going today. You may find in the future that you're going to need more keybinds on that controller and maybe you have to incorporate your HOTAS slash HOCAS or your keyboard to actually get all those keybinds on there. But I think this is going to be a great starting place for you guys and you guys can of course um, change things up as you go along. So let's go ahead and bring up a little graphic of an Xbox controller onto the screen now. So that way you guys can kind of follow along exactly what I'm talking about on my Xbox controller as we describe these keybinds, because this is a whole heck of a lot of just button one, two, three, four, and it doesn't mean all that much without a visual representation. So one thing that is incredibly important is we're gonna need a modifier added to our Xbox controller to make things a heck of a lot easier here. If you don't know what a modifier is, it is a button that you can push to then change the behavior of other buttons on your HOTAS, buttons on your keyboard, on your mouse, whatever it might be. Think of it as akin to holding the shift key to create a capital letter when you're using a word processing uh, piece of software. So. What we need to do here to add a modifier is we want to click on the column for our Xbox controller, or if you want to add it, say a button on your stick, your collective or your throttle, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you would do that as well, corresponding to what you want your modifier to be on. So for today, for this, we're going to make a modifier for our Xbox controller. Now we already have one here, as you guys can see. So to add a new one, all we need to do is go to modifiers, click on that. We then want to add a new modifier and then we want to select the actual device that we want that modifier to be on. In this case, we want it to be on a controller, Xbox One for Windows. We then want to press that button that we want as our new modifier and then the modifier button selected will pop up in this uh, little drop down menu here. It will should auto populate when you press that button. Some controllers don't for whatever reason, in which case you'd have to use the drop down to actually find that specific button that you want for that modifier. And then if you use any other buttons or things like that, they should auto populate as well. Now, since we already have a modifier set for our Xbox controller, we'll just go ahead and click cancel. Whereas you guys at home, you'd want to hit OK to save that. And then you can see your modifier buttons in here as well. And just like we used for our example earlier, we can see we've got left shift in there, left control, left alt, et cetera, et cetera. We'll go ahead and hit cancel here to make sure we don't accidentally uh, wreck anything we've already got set up in there. So for um, the basic controls of the TDAC, we want to definitely have buttons set up for it being able to WAS specific weapons and weapon types. So for this, I'm using the A, B, X, Y buttons on the right hand side of my controller, set up in more or less the same kind of situation they're set up around the selector button on the right hand control grip. So we're going to, I'm sorry, left hand control grip for that. So we're going to have the A button set to gun, the X button set to R for rockets, the B button set to missiles, and the Y button set to the air-to-air -air gun section. The next very important piece of you know, control that we need to have on our Xbox controller is going to be our TADS FOV select switch. During our little demonstration there, you guys saw how I was zooming in and out using the TADS very, very quickly and efficiently using the D-pad on my Xbox controller. 
Next thing, of course, we need is going to be the actual triggers that we need to set up for the hand controllers. We use the left or the right hand grip trigger for the um, laser range finder to laser targets for our hellfires, as well as to get ranges to those targets to set up manually for, say, a long range gun engagement or a long range rocket engagement. And so there are two different detents for this button here. I have found that you really only need to have the second detent um, uh, set and ready to go. You can use the first detent to squirt the laser three times very, very quickly to simply get a laser range um, on that target that you're looking at with the TADS, but you can do the exact same thing by just holding the second detent for just a little bit um, without having to actually fully laser target. Um, so that's really all you need. I do have it set up to use a modifier. My modifier is clicking in my left thumbstick and then whatever button I need to use associated with that. So um, you can use it, really not necessary. You can kind of skip the left hand uh, or the right hand laser range uh, trigger entirely and just map the second D10. The other trigger is the left hand weapons trigger second detent. This is the one that you use to actually fire your weapons, whether that be rockets, guns, or a hellfire missile. Again, I don't have the first detent map. You really don't need to have it mapped at the moment from everything that I've seen with actually practicing and learning the AH-64. Next thing we want to do is now we're gonna get into various sub modes of things to actually use a modifier for. So the things you're gonna use most often, we've already covered, and then we'll go into things you're gonna use a little bit less often that you can then use for a modifier. And that's going to be the first one is gonna be modifying for the uh, left hand uh, group uh, store and update switch. So that's gonna allow you to uh, actually put in a new uh, target point on your um, TSD that you can then come back to later on if you don't wanna engage that target right away or you want to mark that target for cleanup with a gun later on, so on and so forth. And that is set to having my right bumper for the trigger with a modifier by pus pushing in that left thumb stick. We also have the pad sensor select switch between FLIR and TV. That is something that I switch back and forth to a lot, especially when trying to find targets in an urban setting. So that way I can say pick out a fire very quickly and easily and then switch back to TV to be able to see things a little bit more clearly to pick up things like vehicles or infantry. Or if I'm looking just for infantry, like say in a field, I'll use the FLIR mode. So that way I can see those hot bodies down there against the usually cooler grass or um, dirt, things of that nature. Uh, moving on, we've got a few other things like the, uh, we've got the right hand um, uh, stick push in is also modified that I've got the linear motion compensator button there. I highly recommend not using the linear motion compensator at the moment because it is kind of bugged, I believe, and it's definitely bugged in multiplayer and causes a lot of desync. So try to avoid this one, but it's something that's going to be very, very helpful in the future uh, as the AH-64 is updated. Then we've got the right slave button, and this slaves the um, tads to your foresight marker in your heads up display in your helmet mounted sight. And that can be very useful for say, pointing the helicopter at something, unslaving the tads, and then being able to actually move the tads around to find a target that way. Like say, if you know a target's near the base of a big fire, or you're trying to get your tads onto a large target like a building or a ship, just point your helicopter at it, unslave it, boom, you're right on it, good to go. Um, and then another thing that I find to be very, very helpful to have, at least in a limited capacity on my Xbox controller when trying to find targets and engage those targets is going to be having the George AI Helper button set up and good to go there. I have these set to modifiers again, pressing in that left thumbstick and using my X, Y, um, and A and B buttons for the left, right, up and down George AI Helper interface. So that way I can communicate with George in a really easy and squared away fashion while looking heads down in the TDAC and engaging targets. So uh, one more last thing to take a look at is the axes. 
for the different thumbsticks. Right now, the really the only thing that seems to be working properly as of the early access release is the right hand manual track trigger uh, controller, X and Y axis. So I have these set to my right hand, um, my right hand thumbstick on the Xbox controller. It seems to work pretty darn well. I have a little tiny dead zone in there and a curvature of about 30 on both the X and Y axis. Um, and that seems to work really, really well for being able to track targets very easily. Um, keep in mind that Xbox slash PlayStation, if you can get one to work, controllers, their thumbsticks are not nearly as precise as, say, your verbal um, controls or things of that nature when it comes to their axes. So things tend to wobble around a little bit, tend to have a little bit of play in those thumbsticks. So that's why it's a really good idea to have at least a little bit of a dead zone set. So if you guys have any more questions or comments or anything like that about setting up an Xbox controller, please ask away in the comments section or feel free to DM me or whatever. And I may need to make a new video in the future better explaining this stuff. And uh, why don't we go ahead and do another demonstration and uh, we'll close out the video. And that one's kind of close to a lot of civilians, so there we go. There's a good legitimate military target. And it looks like these guys standing around it are armed as well, so that's perfect. And there we go. Now why don't we go ahead and update this target, target two, and there it goes. And you can see the little bit of motion in there, very easy to track that target with the right thumbstick on my Xbox controller. Almost no problem. Kaboom. Got him. Alright, Shaq. Cool guys, so if you like this video, please give a like and a subscribe, and I hope this was helpful for you guys, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.